Beaverworks Diecast Racing, your source for diecast racing action. Welcome back, diecast racing fans and beaver lovers out there. We are back at the bottom of the main track, getting ready to do the final from the Daimler Mainline review. Oh yeah, it's Beaverworks Diecast Racing and the Igloo Proving Grounds Mainline Review. This time we've got that Mercedes that did the Daimler Duke out, going to be going up against the Mainline Review champ in that Jaguar XJ220. All going to be coming up next on Beaverworks Diecast Racing. everybody, Lester here and I'm at the top of the mountain with Lance and Jimmy Pinkeye in that Jaguar XJ220. He's getting ready to defend that title for the seventh time because this car is a monster. Jimmy Pinkeye's just been recklessly throwing himself into every corner and giving this Jaguar everything it's got. Reckless abandonment indeed and whatever voodoo he's using to keep this car on the track has been working and winning races. One more to go tonight, we're gonna have to see if that spell is still holding out. Back down to you, voice. All right, thanks for the update on top of the mountain. Two car format tonight, best two out of three. Let's do this. Race one. Winner from the Daimler Duke out, the Mercedes Benz 560 AMG is going to be going up against the Jaguar XJ220, our mainline review champ, Jimmy Pinkeye, going up against Cindy Six Pack, going down first run of the night. Check it out, we got uh, Jimmy Pinkeye out in front of that Jaguar, like already by a long ways. Beautiful clean line all the way through, gives it a great little slide out the bottom. The XJ220, that thing is a monster, it's undefeatable. The Mercedes Cindy Six Pack is up on the bottom of the 3D bot maker corner. She got upside down coming out of there somewhere. Just got screwed. Let's see where it is. Right there. Looks like she took a hard hit on the inside line and didn't make it to the bottom of the track. That's a DNF for race number one. Jump cam. Even though it doesn't really count in the two-car format, we got bragging rights on the line. 23 centimeters for Jimmy Pinkeye and that Jaguar and the Mercedes coming through at 14.5. This is why Jimmy Pinkeye has been the mainline review champ for six times, going for the seven now coming down the main stretch and by the time he's down off the main stretch he's already got a full car length in front of the mercedes that jaguar is fast it's stable it's just built for this truck and it eating that mercedes for breakfast all the way down the mid stretch and down through the middle looks like cindy is pushing that car everything it had and wasn't able to keep it on its wheels coming out of the 3d bot maker corner jimmy pink guy gets race number one in that jaguar xj220 look at that thing just bouncing out the bottom end there all alone over the line 9.81 time because jimmy's always pulling times in the nines 23 centimeters and that's going to give him the first race out of the two out three. Race two. Lane switch. We've got Jimmy Pinkeye on the inside. Cindy six back on the outside. Mercedes going up against the Jaguar once again. And they're down off the front stretch. Jaguar is way out in front again. Just takes the jump. Nice and straight. Beautiful line. Mercedes is upside down. Jimmy's over the line going for a flatbed finish with a 9.75. Just missed the flatbed up at the top there. Look at that thing. It's fast. There's the Mercedes upside down, turtled again. Pretty much in the same spot coming through the 3D bot maker corner. Just not able to hold on to it coming through there and ends up on her lid all the way down at the bottom. The big slide checking out the jump cam. Jaguar coming through again at 29 centimeters. Come on. Mercedes putting down 14 centimeters. 0.5 shorter than last time. Hit with the tail end. All right. Igloo replay. Let's just watch this Jaguar eat the Mercedes. Coming down off the first stretch. This is why that XJ220 has been holding on for so long. It is just some magical power that has connected itself to this track and is doing so good. Look at it. Ripping around. Picks the perfect line. Jimmy Pinkeye has been up and down this track so many times now. He knows where the corners are. 
It's going to be a tough car to beat. He is just on fire with this thing. Going up to the top, just missing the flatbed. Almost tied that up there for bragging race in this race. Jimmy Pinka in that Jaguar. 9.75 and 29 centimeter jump. That's enormous. Gets the two out of three in two races. That means that Mercedes Benz is going down. It's Jimmy Pinkeye in that Jaguar. Seven time reigning champ now. Team Integrated Racing Sciences. Look at that. Simple. Out of the box, main line, rip and roll. There's the Mercedes. Cindy Six Pack representing Maple Sugar Motorsports. This is it. That Jaguar. This is going to be the seventh burn. There's the stack of cars, the Porsche, the Pontiac, the Nissan, the Viper, the Fast Felon, and now the Mercedes-Benz. Just ticking them off, waiting for the next race. This car is just insane. Jimmy Pinkeye is hot and looking for more. He just wants to, but anybody, anybody hear that? Oh, there he is down in front of the Beaverworks pit area at the side of the track, and it looks like he's calling him on. Waiting to see if anybody's going to uh, come out, and uh, looks like... Damn, just back from the Gravity Throttle Racing's bragging wagons inside of that uh, Volvo S90 is going to take the race. So we've got a bonus for you, folks. D-Man's going to take on Jimmy Pinkeye. Race one. one. All right, this is going to be neat. So, just to be sure, this is not a mainline review, so Jimmy Pinkeye is still going to hold that title. This is for bragging rights only. We've got the Volvo on the inside. The Jaguar's on the outside. Here they go. Down off the first stretch is the modified car going up against the stock car. And uh, modified is making a crazy run of that. And gets all screwy on the 3D bomb maker corner. Jimmy Pinkeye and the Jaguar takes the first race with a 10.60. Just because he made a nice, perfectly clean line, which that Jaguar is known to do. All the way through that 3D Bob Maker corner. There's the Volvo down there. Lots of speed. And just couldn't handle it after the jump. Looks like he uh, cut the corner a little too early and into the side. Bounced him back. Got him all squirrely. Let's go check out some jump cam. All right, Volvo down 21 centimeters for a station wagon. We put a lot of work into that car. And then the Jaguar coming down fresh out of the pot. I wouldn't say fresh. 21.5 centimeters gets the jump there as well. But hey, that's just for bragging rights on the first race, folks. This isn't all about points. This is about who can get down the track the fastest. And look at this. Down off the first stretch there. Neck and neck right into the crash racer's corner. Down through the mid stretch down. Just pulling out the lead. The straightaway on that Volvo is unreal. And then he just couldn't hold on to it. D-Man is all over the place. And Jimmy Pinkeye just slides right past there. Cool as a cucumber over top of the line. Even going for a flatbed finish. That does require your entire vehicle to be on the flatbed in order for it to count, you know, like naturally. Okay, folks, 9.60 race number one and a 21.5 centimeter jump for Jimmy Pinkeye. And that Jaguar gives him the first race out of the two out of three. Race two. All right, we got a lane switch. We got the Volvo on the outside. Jaguar is on the inside, going down. Here we go. Look at that. They're almost, Volvo's pulling out a little bit. Jaguar's cutting up inside, and then it's still D-Man pulling way out in that midsection, then just cuts off that Jaguar. Harsh halfway through the 3D bomb maker corner. He gets it with an 11.58 going for a flatbed finish. That flatbeds are getting popular there, and there was a wicked block that he did in that 3D bomb maker coming down through the midsection there. There it is. Look at he he just swings up and then boom, right there. It looked like Jimmy Pinkeye was going for the same line as before. The nice smooth one he's so used to. And uh, D-Man just cut that off. Coming through the jump cam. Looks like he nosedived in at 20 centimeters in the Volvo. Jaguar coming through 17 centimeters. Didn't have quite the speed right there. Both of them kind of nosedived into the jump that time. Igloo replay. Let's see that trauma unfold there. First stretch coming down off the... And it looks like it's going to be the Volvo getting out just by a bit of a nose. Jimmy's cutting up into his door trying to wipe him out. And D-Man's having nothing to do with that. There's a lot of experience in that car on this track. And that thing is highly modified. That Volvo took a lot of work. And it's been all over the world already. Look at that move right there. He cut off Jimmy. Jimmy went right into the side. And then it's just smooth sailing over top of the line. D-Man's got that one. That's going to make it one to one. One all for each side. Even trying for a flatbed right there. Great looking race number two. 11.58, kind of slow, but he still pulled it off. That's going to make it 1 1 all for this race. 
Race 3. Lane switch once again. We got the Volvo on the inside. Jaguars on the outside. This is race number three. I love when they come down to the third race, folks. Here we go. And it's going to be the Volvo's way out in front already. Like, way out in front. Got the beautiful corner. It's down over top of the line. 9.23. And I don't even know where he hit on the wall. That was beyond the flatbed finish. It's like he's trying to drive himself into the iceberg at the end. That is insane run right there, folks. Okay, let's check that out. Look at the distance he's got. And cuts the beautiful corner. In front of that Jaguar. That's what modified cars are all about, folks. All right. Checking out the jump cam. Stretching it out to 26 centimeters. Not going for distance right there. He just all oh, speeding. Wait for it. There's the Jaguar finally coming through at 20.5 centimeters. Jimmy Pinkeye just not being able to catch the straight line speed of that Volvo. All right. Okay, let's see how this works out. This is the main drag off the front stretch coming down the modified car. And right there, he's almost got the full car length just cuts him off into the rail in the midsection right here you see this is where he cracked the bottle of nitrous and he just goes flying over top of the jump cuts that beautiful 3d bomb maker corner picture perfect and like cameraman can't even catch up to him and then where he went at the end for the flatbed nobody knows all we know is he just rained down onto the screen onto the flatbed right there didn't quite get it but that was uh quite an entrance 9.23 26 centimeter jump race number three he gets the two out of three and what? holds on to the bragging rights for the team on their own home track there it is folks the volvo Ah, uh, yeah, the station wagon grocery getter. We put a lot of work into this thing. It's been down to Gravity Throttle Racing. Did pretty good down there. It's been, but now it's back up here. Got some battle damage on it. Took some damage on that run. It's on the flatbed. We'll get that thing all fixed up. But then you got Jimmy Pinkeye. He still remains the mainline review champ. So uh, that's just for mainlines, for stuff that gets ripped out of the package with no modification. All right, folks. That's wrapping it up for this version of the Mainline Review with the extra little bonus on there, folks. Jimmy Pink Guy's going to keep the title. Don't forget to subscribe and like if you haven't done either of those yet. And there's also the Super Thanks option, folks. You could really explore that, and that would help us out a lot. And if not, you've got the Beaverworks store. you got some shirts and some stickers over there. You can check that stuff out. We're going to have some more stuff sooner or later. We're working on it. All right. Great big beaver work shout out to all you good folks to coming out here and checking out our stuff from Beaverworks Diecast Racing. We'll see you next time.